Okay, Tommy. So Ohio's top talent, OAC. The Rollins boys, all three wrestled today, yeah? All three wrestled, yep. You were in two different divisions though, right? Yeah, yeah, we had Tommy in division four and then uh, the twins wrestled division three. It's their first year in division three, so. So they're the bottom. They're at the bottom, yeah. And they uh, they had plenty of good competition. They had plenty plenty of good things that they did and plenty of things to work on, so it was a good, good day. I love that you come to these things you get fired up, but you're not out of your mind. <laughs> you do get fired up. So far, yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so far. <laughs> but not getting out of your mind, not yeah. like getting out of control. Yep. I mean, yep. I don't think you've ever been out of control. Right. Ever, even as right. a college coach. But what's it like staying even keel, not letting your kids see that maybe you're a little fired up yeah, about something? I think, maybe. I think it's, it's difficult, but, you know, you start to invest a lot of time in the kids. You start to see the time that they invest. And... You know, naturally, you start to get a little bit more emotional than when it's first grade wrestling. Um, but I think the whole the whole thing is not really the outcome or the result. It's just making sure that the effort's there. And then as they're getting older, you know, it's more than just effort. I want to see that they're actually applying what we're doing in practice, that they're getting in these critical situations and they're doing the right things. And that's sometimes what gets me a little bit, you know, emotional. But uh, overall, it's just, you know, it's, it's part of the sport. It's, it's, it's that's the type of sport that it is. So I think it's good to have that. Um, in these kids matches and in their lives super long day for you <clears throat> yeah. like you we kept Those trying to boys. do an interview try, trying yeah. to do an interview yeah. and then what was really cool about it is one time i was like eh, you were like oh no we can fit it in and yeah. i was like no i really don't want to yeah. mess with that because i i feel bad if someone missed a match because they're right. doing an interview for promotional right, purposes right, right. or whatever but when you're here and you're all in on it like you are mm -hmm. how good does it feel do you get do you ever get like ohio state flashbacks or <laughs> is there any of that you know i mean it's I don't know that it feels quite like competing, but it, it definitely fills my cup when it comes to wrestling. And I feel like I'm getting it, I'm involved in the sport enough to where I don't ever regret leaving it, you know, and I get to see and see the process of practice and, and see, see the outcomes in the matches and go back to the salt mines and, and correct things and fix things. And obviously it's a great sport where many characteristics that make great adults are taught and founded in wrestling. And so obviously having my kids and people that I've, I'm growing to care about in our youth club, you know, it's just a good, it's a good overall uh, sport for that. And so I'm, I'm very happy to continue to keep, keep involved in wrestling. I don't, I don't know if I'd be the same person if I didn't have it. It's never the Tommy Rollins show to me. Like, it's always like about your kids. I really like that. <laughs> no, seriously. Like, I, I really, that. I appreciate that. Well, I do. <laughs> What's awesome about it is, do they really know? I mean, they, I mean, how old was Tommy when you were in Iowa City in 2012? Yeah, Tommy was uh, two years old. Two years old. old. The twins weren't born. Iowa City. The twins were a year old. They were a year they old. A year wow. Old, so and then your daughter was? She was five four, years old. Five four, years four, old. Four or five years old, yeah. So they so, don't remember a lot of this. They right. don't know a lot of dad's history. Right. And if they do, they come across it maybe. I'm yeah. guessing you're not showing them NCAA finals or right. anything like that. What is that like? For them to discover things about dad that maybe you're not telling them about your career because it's yeah. just never about you is what i feel whenever I talk to you <laughs> when i watch you conduct yourself when i see media on you when i anything about you yeah. never about time you're i appreciate that and i you know i i think that it's important for my kids to feel like you know they're paving their own path because when when they walk out there you know they're not they're not taking anything that i did out there with them they're not taking anything but themselves out there so it's important for them to to view it as, as theirs. I mean, this wrestling is theirs. The story is theirs. The everything that unfolds out there is completely theirs. But by the same token, I think they feel. Um, I think they understand the privilege of having growing up in a home where wrestling was very cultural and part of my life. And I think they understand that that's a good thing for them. It's an advantage for them. I don't think they feel pressure um, to be like that um I, I think they want to but i don't think they feel pressure to which is good i don't know that that all that's always going to be the case but you know it's something that i i do pay attention to i, I teeter totter and make sure that it's managed properly but you know it's it's the truth about wrestling is when you walk out there you're taking yourself and nothing else with you so um, it's important for them to, to understand where they come from and understand what they're around but at the same time you know you can't take any of it with you and so that's what's that's what's awesome about wrestling it doesn't matter if you come from humble beginnings and um, you don't have much, or if you have a lot, you know, when you go out there, none of it comes with you. So it's just you, and I think that's what's great about wrestling. Daughter's Ellie, right? Ellie, yeah. She's 14, just turned 14. Is she taller than mom yet? Yes, yeah, she is. She's 5'6". 
A couple more years, mom will be the shortest in the family. Yeah. <laughs> so your daughter's probably going to be over six foot. Uh, I think they only think she's got another inch or two. I think they're thinking five, really? seven, five. I thought she was going to be Well, girls take off a little sooner than That's guys. That's true. So, yeah, so. Is she soccer right now? She's all soccer. Because your plays, wife was soccer, right? My wife played soccer at the University of Kentucky, and it's a big part of her life. And uh, my daughter's been pretty into soccer, and she plays for a really good club, Ohio Premier in Columbus, and um, does a good job on a really competitive team. And it's becoming important to her. And the school she's going to go to, Watterson, was – they're always top five, six, seven in the state in Division One, so she'll she'll step right into a good environment there. So it's good. Okay, so you're a Reedy guy. This whole thing, I talked to the Shoe Law kid. Yeah, I'm friends with like Tom Wallbacher and Nick Preston. You gotta live in the. Of course, I know that the Sabato is your favorite. Yeah. But you gotta live in the district. Yeah. You have to live within the Catholic district in which you attend in the Columbus area with yeah, your so diocese. Correct? I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm. I know enough to be dangerous with those rules. I don't it's know. It's weird to me. Yeah. So there's uh, you unlike West Columbus, right? Yeah, unlike Cincinnati and Cleveland, there's five or six Catholic high schools in Columbus, and you have to live live in that district. Otherwise, you have to get a signature from the principal in your district that you're going to go to the to this neighboring. They have school. to release you. Essentially. They have to essentially release you. But then there's also some caveats. For example, if your parents went to high school at the high school that you don't live in that j- district, you automatically get to go. There's a legacy. So your kids could go to Reedy. They could go to Reedy. Yeah, they could go to Reedy. Okay. Yes. Yes. Obviously, that's not a thing that's yeah, on your Waterson's, not on your yeah, radar. The move, but they Where'd your go wife to go? She went to Hilliard Derby. She went to Derby. Yeah. So that's not. Yeah. That's a public. So we live in Dublin, and uh, we go to a feeder school that is predominantly Waterson. It's about I would I don't know eighty percent Waterson, twenty percent Reedy. So a lot of that has to do with most of the, most of their friends will be there. So that's where we're gonna go. Got it. Okay. So I know that Ellie did Ellie's jellies, and was she on Fallon? What was she on? Fallon, Jimmy Fallon. She's on Fallon, right? So you got like this like industrious nature about you, this right. business-minded nature. You're <laughs> in produce, you know. Rudis is one of your one right. of your things that you do. Right. Why? Where does this come from? Why? Why are the Rollins is such uh, business-minded? I guess I would say. I don't say. know. I don't know what, where where it came from for me personally, but I've always just had an entrepreneurial spirit and. I work in the produce industry, but the owner of the company makes me feel like a piece of the company is mine, so I have that entrepreneurial itch that's being scratched every day. I'm a partner with him on a, on a great logistics company that Mike Pasillo runs, and then Brutus. So Pasillo runs that? The freight portion, yes. Mike runs and that? Mike runs it, and we got... That'll make him better, Mike Pasillo. Keith Witt, Cody Magrum, we got a Cody Birch, we got a bunch of wrestlers really? that are selling that. Really? That many? Yeah, yeah, it's, so it's been... Witt's going to have a kid soon. Look that's out. That's right, that's Look right. Look out. And Magrum just had one. Yes! So... So having all these wrestlers underneath you, it's purposeful. It's oh, not, yeah. it is on Absolutely. purpose. Yeah, no, it's, Why? I just think that there's a um, fundamental grit that most wrestlers possess if they spent a long enough time in it. You know, I think that um, especially in sales or business, you, you really got to be confident yet, yet understand that you have to be on your toes at all times. And sales guys especially understand that. So, you know, to be rejected and then continue to come back for more and somehow like that process is somewhat of a unique skill and wrestlers have it in spades if you find the right the right wrestlers right so um they just they just understand how to get up and go and get up and work and they they like that they like that there's a scoreboard they like that we keep track of who's doing what when where how and why and how good we're doing and how good we're not doing and how much we need to progress and what's the plan you know most competitors gravitate towards that well most most people in the world don't want to be measured every day and so wrestlers are okay with that so because of that we look to we look to find wrestlers or ex-athletes or people that just like to compete how scary is it entering a shoe market (laughs) terrifying well it was yeah for sure i mean it was a lot of a lot of research and development a lot of cost a lot of capital investment a lot of time a lot of resource um and it was, it still is quite a journey, but I feel like now we have a full merchandising package. Our, our supply chain is locked in. The product, I think, now speaks for itself. And um, it's still intimidating, still a lot of risk, but uh, the reward is there. It's, it's great. It's, it's foundational. It's the one piece of equipment that a wrestler really, truly relies on. So it's cool to be a part of that. It's, it's cool to know that um, you're designing and developing equipment that wrestlers really, truly have uh, an opinion that matters on it. It impacts their performance. So it's been a great journey and we're going to keep going and there's more to come for sure. 
how do you keep people like Kyle Snyder? How do you keep these individuals? You know, you've entered some new people. Yeah. Pletcher, Colin yeah. Moore. You keep the younger guys. And then you do this legacy. You got a lot of the Dave Schultz yeah. stuff. How do you keep the superstar? The guy, the superstar. Between him and Jordan Burroughs, there are faces, right? Yeah. Of USA Wrestling, they're Olympic gold medalists. How do you keep people like that under your brand? I think I think they got to believe in what the brand stands for, the ethos of the brand, what it means to them, to the sport, um, how it speaks to them. I think that's first and foremost. And then I think secondly, um, they got to feel like they're involved in a company with a group of people that um, expect the same standard of excellence from themselves that, that these guys do on the mat. And so I feel like we have that at Rudis, and so we forge pretty authentic and natural bonds with the people that we work with because we're – we're in it to win it. You know, we want, we want to do great things with wrestling, but we also want to compete and, and do great things as a company and as a business. And so that's that's always paramount. It's just the, the brand has to stand for something. It's got to matter to the people that join the brand. And then, you know, we got we got to work in a way that is world-class, that's Olympic level, right? And so when we try to elevate ourselves to that standard, I think these guys, even if they don't explain it the same way that I am, I think they feel that, and I think that they're drawn to it. At least that's my opinion, my humble opinion. And... Um, it's kind of like um, you know you earn that every day, so you can't just do that one day or one time or one year. I mean, you earn that type of trust and that type of relationship on a daily basis. So we feel like everything I just said, we got to prove and we got to do and we got to execute on on a daily basis, which is not my deal. I mean, I'm 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 not in the company at all from an execution or time perspective, but I do know that that's that's the culture that Jesse Lang wields, and uh, it comes from wrestling. I mean, that's that's just wrestling talk. I mean, so. How much longer, <clears throat> you guys just dropped a 2.0 shoe, uh, mm-hmm. Kyle. How much longer do you guys have him? And then obviously it goes into, do you, how much, do you know much longer do you even have him under? I think Kyle's going to be around for a long time. I, th- I know that we'd love to have him around for a long time. Um, I just think that he stands for what's great about wrestling, what Rudis means, personified, right? It's people like Dave Schultz and Kyle Snyder and others. And um, I know that we're going to do everything we can to, to continue to make, continue to keep him a part of our family, and I think he does feel like he's a part of the family. So, last thing, when are we going to see like a reboot or a T. Row Funky type deal? When are you going to get back in the media? We want you. When are you going to get back? Man, I, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Um, four kids, three part of three companies, and a lot of different things. I don't know if we'll ever get back to it, but I love it. I love being able to speak that way about wrestling. Do you have anything else for me? No, I appreciate everything that you do. I watch all your interviews and videos, and it's awesome. So You don't have to lie. There's a lot, There's way too many to watch. <laughs> way too many ones that don't matter that you're watching. <laughs> that it's just me doing nonsensical things. Right. Not even the, You can't watch the chainsaw ones. I got a lot of trees, Don. I, I got a lot of trees. I run around in the front and backyard with your kids. You got a nice property, by the way. No, it's so. real. Yeah, we yeah, love it. Good. We love I like it. it. I, like I just it. dropped a tree back there, and now we're yeah. cleaning it up. So, <laughs> Tommy, thank you for the time. Congratulations on the title for little Tommy. Yes. Not Tommy Jr. Get the, let's straighten that out real right. quick. What are, all the, what are the four Tommies? My grandfather's Thomas Charles. My dad's Thomas Joseph. I'm Thomas David. And little Tommy's Thomas Ramsey. Tommy, thank you for the time. Safe thank travels you. back to Columbus. Thanks.